Hello, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, and today we are continuing our figure checklist creation, if you will. At this point, what I am doing essentially is going through my entire collection, trying to create some kind of a database of action figures that uh, I can utilize for just keeping track along with um, every, you know, just for any, any number of reasons. If I want to uh, downsize the collection, if I want to sell the collection, if I want to do anything of any nature involving that, um, you know, I want to keep track of what I have. And just because there has been such an amazing amount of figures that have been released, and I'm not even talking about like the whole vintage 1970s and 80s. We're not even there. That, that in a lot of ways is frankly very easy to keep track of. Okay, all of the stuff that you see with um, anything from 1978, 79, 80 through about 85, it all basically was very easy to organize. I mean, yes, you could break down variants and things of that nature. You can break down cards where they try logo cards, where they from other countries or, you know, whatever they were. Uh, you know, you can you can definitely really get down into the weeds as they are, as they say. But when it comes to the Power of the Force 2 line. They call it Power of the Force 2, which, which because it's really just Power of the Force, but they call it Power of the Force 2 because in um, 1985, 86, or I think it was 85 actually, there was a Power of the Force line back then. That was the very last or second to last ditch effort by Kenner to keep the line going once there were no more movies. And I believe that was in 1985. In 1986, there was uh, droids and an Ewok line from the Saturday morning cartoons, which everybody laughed at, but that was what, that was the 80s, man. That's what 80s did. They released all these different figures of toys in action figures and play sets based on a cartoon that they showed on Saturday mornings, or maybe in the afternoon on the weekdays, but generally speaking, it was Saturday morning cartoons. So it kind of, you know, uh, Droids and Ewoks was just the beginning of that or, at least, or the end of that for Kenner, but that had been going strong for a lot of other companies. Anyway, I digress. So um, then you go a few years of the dark times where there was no figures, right? And then you get into the 1990s, mid-90s, mid around 95, and the Power of the Force line came out again by Kenner, this time owned by Hasbro. And But collectors that were at that time still had all the old collections, wanted to keep separating, so we just called it Power of the Force 2. And that was followed by Power of the Jedi, and sh there was Shadows of the Empire in there. There were all these different lines. Some of the lines were very short. Shadows of the Empire only had about, I don't know, eight, eight or nine figures in it. And then, you know, when you get into things like the Clone Wars and the Legacy Collection, they started releasing 40, 50, 60 figures in each line. So you can imagine how many figures there are. Now, in doing this, I'm just trying to keep track of where each figure comes from because there are some figures are straight repacks and straight repaints of other lines, okay? But some of them are repacks, but might include a, a different accessory. You know, like a lot of figures came with a Build-A-Droid part where you get six figures and each figure came with a piece of a droid and you put the droid together. Well, if that was a repack, it didn't matter because it still included the droid, droid piece. So, you know, if you were trying to collect that droid, you would need to collect that. So, you know, these are the things that I'm trying to figure out. So I wanted to take the time to kind of go through. And I'm right now, I'm just focusing on, you can see behind me, there's a lot of stuff in my collection, but I'm just focusing right now on action figures, three and three quarter inch, and then later six inch black series action figures. And I'm not even really, I'm not even really delving into things like um, the toy box figures in Disney or the hyper real figures, those two uh, eight inch figures that they came out with, the elite series in Disney. I'm pretty much just dealing with the three and three quarter inch figures. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at what I'm doing. Okay, so you can see here that uh, this, and, and, and you know, in some previous episodes, I kind of showed what I was doing here. And now you can see, when you look closely, that if I have a figure, I call it loose, okay? Um, you might also find, I'm trying to see if I have any other ones here. This is a, this is a very long, look at this. Page 16 of 114, Okay. So I'd have to go through this a little bit faster than what I'm doing right now to see. Oh, there you go. There are some ones, if I have it on the card, okay, I just, I kind of, you know, change the color. I have to set in a five-column 
thing just so and I do that because I can get more the most amount of figures on it now I have started a second list which I'll show you my second list is more of a like a table okay now I could do this on a database like uh, Excel but I decided to do it with a table on Word only because it's a little easier to insert photos and you can shrink them down a little bit okay but this is kind of what I'm doing and I keep track of it as you can see we got the line the year the name the accessories. I, I started with something, uh, in, you know, very specific, but now I've pretty much pulled it back to just weapons. You know, like it comes with weapons, that kind of thing. If it's a repack or a repaint, which these early ones aren't yet, and then do I have it in min on card or loose? As I said, this this one, this list, when I'm done with it, it I will delete anything that I don't have. This is really just going to be my checklist. And then if I do decide to sell and what I sold it for, that kind of thing. Okay, so, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm using, I'm actually doing two lists. Um, I'm a visual learner, as I mentioned on previous episodes, so this to me works better. It helps me be able to visualize um, what the figures are exactly, what do I need to do, so there you go. So as you can see here on this wall, okay, now this is not every single figure I own that's loose, okay? There's, there's quite a few elsewhere, but here are, I just, you know, created kind of like a wall of figures. I feel like if you've ever seen... Uh, the old 19, I guess it's 1980, Clash of the Titans, and Zeus was talking up on, in his in his cloud on high, and he actually had human beings kind of set up like little action figures. <laughs> I always thought this was this was like, and when he would take them and move them, it was like voodoo, like they would they would actually be moved around and doing stuff in the real world. It's kind of an interesting take. Anyway, sorry for the glare on some of this, but one of the things that I did when I this a lot of these these legacy and Clone Wars figures that I took out of the package, I kept the, bo the box art, or at least the box title, Matchstick, for example. Okay, Ayla Secura, okay? And that way, it allowed me not only to keep track of what the figure was, what, what the character name was, because, you know, there's a lot of names here. Let me find one. Well, we all know who Hondo Onaka is. He's gotten more famous nowadays. But how about, like, Argyus, right? Here's Argyus. Now, he was in one episode of The Clone Wars. So, you know, I'm a human being, folks. I'm not going to remember every single character. How about Rum Sleg? Okay. I know this is uh, Jeremac Colton. I have a co-worker that I work with with the same last name. So, it's easy for him to remember. And it's also Jeremy Bullock's character from uh, Revenge of the Sith. Anyway, so this helps keep track of it. But there were some that I didn't do that with early on. So when that happened, I either utilized a little label maker. There's one there, 501st Trooper. Or I just used a, like a yellow post-it. Like, I can't read his name, but you see a little piece of a yellow post-it there. And it includes the line, like abbreviated line, and what uh, the name of the character is. And the year, usually. Okay? So as you can see, we move along, move along, move along. These are all, they all have been marked. They either have a label. I did not, I did not permanently affix the label poor this poor luke figure looks like he's like wrapped around his label I'm like, okay or his label wrapped around him i didn't uh, use the label to actually tape to it to the to the figure or to the, the little container i just did it to um just to have it so i had access to what the name of it is now some might argue well you know darth tuba if you were going to put them right back in containers and put them up on walls why didn't you just leave them in the package and I, that's truly an excellent question, okay? But I will tell you this. My experience has been, not that I'm really doing this for any kind of investment, but my, my experience has been that the figures, when they're complete, not that every single one of these are complete, but most of them are, when they are complete and they have all their accessories and you put them out on sale on eBay, I will at least get the price I paid for them, okay? People are trying, you know, and, and they're also cheaper to ship, so I can save a little money on shipping, Okay? Uh, yes, it's very possible that some of these figures were worth a little bit more, okay? And they do have a higher price going, but there's just, the market is so flooded with a lot of these figures that it just isn't, it's not a wise investment to make money, you know what I mean? It's just something that, for me, if I sell off this, it really would be more to, you know, to sell it off to fans that want to collect, that want to take over, take over the mantra, if you will. Now, on the other side of the camera, right behind me here, you'll see that I have a lot of battle packs, okay? 
these are some Black Series figures that are on display. I have a whole shelf over here. You've seen that if you look on previous episodes, but that shelf is pretty much full now. So now I have new figures coming into this space. So uh, the battle packs are part of this. They're, you know, they are, they are regular action figures. So I have, you know, taken track of, well, sometimes they're just carded figures like this one, like Poe Dameron. But like, say right here, we have the Resurgence of the Jedi. I do keep track of which figures are in there. Okay, most of those are repacks, okay? It's, but, you know, of course, it comes with a nice little extra accessory, usually, like the table with holographic Leia on it, okay? So I have basically been able to, with the exception of Black Series, I haven't done anything with Black Series yet. I'm going to come back to that. But I have basically gone through this entire room, this one room. It's not my only room. And anything that is a three and three-quarter inch figure, I have recorded. I have let put down on the on the sheet if I have it, if I if it's loose, if it's carded. Okay. Is it every single one? No, it is not every single one. Okay. There are a handful of exceptions. Not too many, actually, though. I'm looking around. I think I pretty much covered most of them. So, um, and you know, and again, it's not like I have to have it be 100%, but if I can get it to be like 95% accuracy, that would be good. But what I want to do now is take you into the other room and I'll show you the next thing that I'm doing when it comes to trying to record the figures okay oh by the way we have these these are also i've also recorded all of these okay these are essentially just display cases i was gonna pick up a whole bunch of these and use them but they are a little heavy so um they're cool looking you know they have the little mirror back so they're really well done they're but they're a little heavy a little expensive so i opted instead for the individual plastic pieces here we'll get through here's our, our other part of our studio all right, and we get into our other room, my my freakishly huge boiler room, which and you know, and people have reached out to me and said, "How can you know? How could you put your stuff in there? What if something catch fire?" Well, guys, I have my my boiler and my water heater and everything checked yearly, and everything uh, has been coming out fine, and I have everything of that is of a cloth or flammable variety way away from the heater and things are off the ground except for these things but they're all plastic so it's all good all right now a lot of what you see here is you know non-figure related like this little my little tribute to promotional items we have the glasses that have figures in them we have some legos up top okay and but here you can see we have some figures we have some more figures we have some more figures so now i gotta go through this whole space but that's not even where i'm starting what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this part of the room. Oops, sorry for my heat going on. I'm going to start at this part of the room because I have some of the original Power of the Forest first few figures that came out. Now, as you can see, I have these kind of on a little protecting thing. I have already marked all of these as mint on card. This one I'm particularly proud of because it's actually signed by C-3PO himself, Anthony Daniels. It is addressed to, it is signed to with my name. I actually do that out of respect for the actor because I feel like I want him to know that I'm buying this for my collection. I'm not buying it to sell it, okay? So yes, I, you, know, you know, of course my, some will argue, I've actually heard the argument and it's a good argument that there are people that, you know, who per specifically leave their name out of it because when they die, their children uh, are gonna have to sell off these autographs unless they wanna keep them for posterity. So uh, they don't feel that it's right for them to have to deal with the burden of having a signed figure. But considering that this is really one of my only autographs, I didn't think it was, I'm not an autograph collector. So there you go. So I've already answered all these. Now, then you gotta look up here and you see that we actually have more figures. In fact, all the rafters look all the way down. There is a ton of figures. Now, those are some titanium vehicles. We don't have to worry about those right now. But look at all of the figures. So, now these are original vintage. Okay, so I don't have to worry about those just yet. But everywhere else, there's a lot of figures. And I have to kind of just... So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take them one at a time. And I'm going to record them. Okay, so let's start. I'm not gonna, by the way, folks, this isn't gonna be, uh, this is not gonna be the whole video. I'm just, I'm just starting it right now. 
All right, so what do we got here? We got um, Death. Oh, I, you know what? I already did Death Star Gunner. I know that. I already took care of Death Star Gunner. This is the Power of the Force um, two line. This is the green package of probably 99 ish or so. Here is um, the Space Trooper. Okay, this was from the expanded universe. Okay, so I'm going to come back over here. All right, and let me actually go into this and do my little one of my favorite features: Control Find expanded and sorry I'm, I'm, uni well, I don't know, but let me see if it's oh yep there's expanded universe and yep there they are okay so I gotta look for space trooper there it is and it's mint on card so I just do M O C oh sorry let's try that again M O C and then I actually highlight this whole thing. Oops, no, I don't want blue, that's for loose. I use uh, this, I use this, uh, oh geez. There it goes, all right. So there we go, that that marks that one. Now, I will have to go back into that other list and do it, but I think what I might end up doing is just create, little by little, by little I'll create this list. I'll, I'll add to this list in terms of what's mint, what's loose, what's, what do I, what's missing. And then the other one, I will um, kind of work on that and just you know, transfer one over to the other. I'm also gonna transfer everything to a Google Doc eventually. All right, what else? what's next, what's next? We got Darth Vader with a lightsaber with the flashback photo. Okay, so I'm gonna, I think it's pretty close to here because it's uh, it's same power of the Force 2. I'm gonna get past beyond the, um, there we go. There it is, Darth Vader. Now, I just happen to know that this is there, okay? Now, it's easier when it is uh, in the package. I won't deny that, okay? Because when I have some loose figures, all right, there it is. When I have some loose figures, the loose figures, like, for example, up here, okay? Now, I happen to know that this, I put these up here for specifically for a reason. These loose figures are part of the this playset that I unboxed with the Slave One, okay? So I know that they're part of the Slave One playset, or Battle Pack, or what have you. All right, so I know that, and that helps. But occasionally, you know, especially with some of the main characters, like Anakin, like Vader, Darth Maul, there has to be like 40 Darth Mauls, and it's so hard to pick out, all right? So, but that's kind of what I'm doing. All right, let's do a couple more. We got Palpatine, and again, and I can tell by the whole flashback photo thing this was 99 this was right before episode one came out they had this really cool effect with these um flashback photos okay where'd you go guys where'd you go there he is right there with force lightning boom that really helps okay and nice thing up whoops eh control z is your friend here especially when you're oh right there it is oops sorry again kind of my apologies for the wonkiness of the video okay so what's nice about this is that i guess that i'm a visual learner i even have a little tiny version of this but but my my computer happens to be <clears throat> touch sensitive so so then i can get a little bit of a closer look at it now, unfortunately i will tell you the downside is that this uh this document is well past the gig right now all right it's like it's like Gonna, it's probably going to end up being. I think I'm done with adding photos. There's a few new, like obviously it's going to get bigger because there's new there's new figures coming out, and we'll add those two figures. You know, we have some Clone Wars. Hey, what's the matter with you, dude? Come on, get up there. <laughs> we got some Clone Wars. We got Yoda in his little thing. We got Ray and a speeder. We got some troopers in the back there. We got Ezra. Lots of, lots and lots and lots of figures. Okay, let's continue on. We got. Uh, looks like luke skywalker with blast i think i called that farm boy luke and again i do have them kind all the carded cards that i the carded cards all the carded figures that i am that i am in possession of i do have here it is i call it farm boy Ooh. so apparently i have to look at this more closely yep i have two of these i have a loose one and i have a min on card Wow, that's even, that's fun.
Now, when I do have multiple ones like this, okay, I, I do, uh, I, you know, as I said, some of this is just planning for the distant future, okay? Uh, but some of it, you know, maybe, maybe when I have doubles of things, I'm probably going to end up, thinking, all right, let's do a two for here, all right? We got, it's hard to see, we got Amperu and we got C-3PO, and all right, we'll just do those two. They're both, I know they're both very close to here because green card. I know the Amperu one, I think, is like a flashback. Yeah, they're both flashback photos. All right, well, you know what? I'm not going to waste time. Find Baru. I only have two. There's one. There it is, mint on card. Now, sometimes I, you know, I, what I'm actually what I'm going to go back over and do is I'm actually going to highlight the entire thing, not just the MOC. I'm going to highlight the entire thing, okay? And what I say, C three PO. Now, one nice thing, one little thing Word does uh, that's nice is that when you're doing a um, when you're doing a look for. Oh, not that one. Ooh, hmm. Unfortunately, huh. Look at that. Now, I do sometimes, I will say, I don't know if I have a C-3PO with a flashback photo. I may have to go and recheck. So there's an example. You know, it's not a perfect system, guys. I'm not pretending it to be, okay? This one, believe it or not, I don't think that's the right one. That's This one has the uh, little, first of all, it has a little uh, slide, from the slides, slideshow slide, fake photos. It also comes with a net and it's the removable limbs. And this looks like, nope, it's just, oh, it says with removable arm. Hmm. All right, so there's an example of one I'm gonna, one I'm gonna have to add because if I go through it, I don't think, yeah, we're already into episode one, episode one. C-3PO from Purchase of the Droids. Here's one with a coin, which we didn't do. And then a removable limbs. Not removable arm, but removable limbs. Okay, so now we know. So you can see there is a great amount of work here. But believe it or not, you know, I've watched a lot of people's collections on it. I've been enjoying watching folks' collections on the internet, on YouTube. And uh, I've been pretty impressed with a lot of what people have done. But I've also seen a lot that I kind of shake my head at and say, you know... It, I mean, some of them, you know, I've seen some where people are moving. So obviously everything's in boxes and they've just been so busy. They have jobs and I get all of that, you know, but I do believe that you have to take the time to nurture your collection and you have to move it around. You have to do some things, you, have, you know, clean it. You have a lot that you have to do. So I've been, I've been playing around with it. I mean, I do need to dust some more, you know, especially down here, <laughs> but um, here's my little Ewok that I don't have an Ewok headdress for. So I gave him my, uh, what's his name? The headdress from one of the masks from one of the Nemodians from just a Don Post mask. But unfortunately, the Nemodian part melted. You know, those masks are not meant to last. And then 20 years after I pur purchased it, it is no more. But I thought, well, I'll keep, the, I'll keep this part and it'll be the little headdress for the Ewok. So there you go. Now I've done previous videos. You can go around and look at the videos themselves. One nice thing here, I, I did these. I'm probably going to dismantle these. These were Ultrama or Ultrama um, displays. You can still get them, I think. And they're really neat. They come in standard gray. I'll just kind of go through this. You've got your Hoth little scene. You've got your Andor, which included the bunker playset. You got a little um, Geonosin scene. You've got your uh, Theed, or I should say Trade Federation. Nice little uh, Luke and Han New Hope. And back down to more Geonosin fights. I'm actually looking to dismantle this. Part of the reason is that it's, you know, I mean, this stuff comes in gray. I painted this one tan. I painted one brown. I painted one green. I painted one white. And, and you know, don't get me wrong. I'm happy with what I did. But these are from 20 years ago. And, you know, dioramas, I, I've been a little hesitant to do much with dioramas. Because dioramas tend to not last they just you know gravity sets in and they just don't work 
they don't look as nice. They, you know, they get dusty. They just, it just becomes impossible to clean. So, um, I, and I'm plus, I'm, I'm looking to perhaps, um, you know, that some of the, most of these are complete figures because I included the weapons in there. So I'm thinking of just cleaning them up and then, you know, boxing them up and maybe zip locking them and putting them in a cell pile and, you know, make sure I have my single one. Like for some reason, I don't know why I have Han Solo in his little torture chamber. <laughs> That's an odd thing to have in Hoth, but I do. So what are you going to do? All right. So anyway, uh, it's, it, you know, it's a lot of fun. And, and, and again, there's no, I'm not looking to, I mean, people ask me like, oh, you know, it's such a waste of money. You know, it brought me a lot of happiness. And I did try to keep a lot of things. I mean, for a while there, I was by all of these figures. I own every one of these figures loose. And I bought two of them each. One to open and one to keep in the package. Guys, after, and, and, and all the ones up here, same thing. Not that I ordered, bought two of them, but I said, oh, if it was a Han Solo figure. I said, well, I already have an open Han Solo. I don't need another open Han Solo. So I'll just keep it, you know, like, whatever. I'll keep it uh, in the, uh, I'll keep them, some of them in the package, which is exactly what I did. Well, guess what? Eventually, that turned into an entire wall, and that turned into two walls, and that turned into boxes. And that's the one thing I will not do, and as a collector, I strongly urge you, to rethink your priorities. If you cannot display your collection, if you do not have the room to display your collection, then you need to rethink collecting. Because collecting something to put it in a box is not collecting. That's, we, files go in your box. Files go into file boxes, okay? I mean, I appreciate what Steve Stansweet does. You know, he has like large, gigantic, shelves with like comic book boxes in them and you can open them up and then you can see all the figures lined up but he also has them loose and displayed so i i just i strongly urge everybody to be careful with that okay so i think that'll do it all right i i'm i will give you some updates all right i'm not going to document every single one but like i said the one right out the one out in that space okay all of the things that are in there have been done but if you look behind here, it's not lit right now, but if you see in the back of the studio here, my backdrop, there's a ton of figures there, okay? There's some that are in little, they're hard to see, but they're in little cases. There are some that are part of like three packs, okay? Not a not an easy thing to have to, you know, keep hold of, you know? And as I said, you know, we all, by the way, here's my, here's my vintage figures. They're not part of this. I will never part with those, you know? Because that doesn't make up, take up that much room. That's it. That's every vintage figure that came out. A couple of the droid figures at the top and the Cantina Band. Not Cantina Band, sorry. Max Rebo Band. Okay, those are basically the entire vintage line. Doesn't take up a lot of room. So if, if ever I sell my home, which will probably happen someday, and move someplace where it's like a townhouse or an apartment, I would, you know, just get a three-bedroom and I'll have a second or a two-bedroom and have to use the second room to put a little wall together. Maybe I'll keep some of my display cases and uh, maybe keep some of the high-end stuff like over here. These are all the Hot Toys, Gentle Giant, Sideshow figures, you know, that kind of thing. But I'm okay with that, you know? So, uh, but as I said, I've already been through most of this room in this space. And if it's an action figure uh, that's three and three quarter inch or, or a, ve a vehicle that included an action figure, a place that included anything that included a figure, I have recorded it in this room pretty much everything so uh and now you just saw what i'm going to be doing now with the next one i will move along i'll i'll, I'll uh i'll give you occasional updates okay because this is not a easy this is not a short-term project this is going to take me months and months all right i do a little bit of work every day i don't work crazy amounts i'm not up here i'm not here all night because i'm not trying to overtake anything i'm just trying to keep track all right, so that'll do it for this uh, episode. I do have to say, I'm thinking about in, in doing some live streaming, okay? So anybody who sees this, uh, just keep checking um, my YouTube feed and Instagram and look for some live streams coming. Um, I think I'm, I'm actually thinking about doing a pre-recorded episode once a week and then the other day, probably the Sunday one, doing a live stream like in the afternoon, something like that. So we'll see, we'll see if we can do it. All right, so thank you so much for watching and check me out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook on Dark Super Star Wars Unboxing page on Facebook. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel before, be, other than just subscribing and sharing, 
uh, please check out my T Public store and uh, you know purchase a some Darth Tuba merch. And thank you so much for watching. And until next time, may the force and the toys be with you. Little bonus I wanted to put at the end here. In uh, calculating some of my figures here, I realized that some of these had the Comtech technology, which was the 1990s, late 90s, really featured prominently in the um, uh, episode one figures, but that did include some of the original characters. Now, I will warn you, you had to have this device that was meant to look like the communicator. Of course, it's huge and bulky, and it's like so much bigger than the um, Qui-Gon communicator was. It just shut off. Now, I will say this. You turn it back on. You get, you get some cool sound effects. That's kind of nice, right? But when you put the ComTech chip over it, now they sounded really weird. I won't lie to you. They sounded really strange. But I feel like the Stormtrooper one works. How many words do they do here? All right. Now there's more than just these three, but these are the three that I had access to. Here's War. Oh, I think that's the sound of the. He comes with his droid caller, and you know that it's a droid came into the room. Hey, we don't serve their kind here. Your droids, they'll have to wait outside. No blasters! <laughs> Sounds so weird. Let's see how they did with Vader. And now, Your Highness, we will discuss the location of your hidden little base. What have you done with those guns? So weird. That sounds like a computer. I find you like a face disturbing. Mm. And now, Your Highness, we will discuss the location of your hidden little base. Ah, good times. We laughed at it back then, and it's we look at it more nostalgic now. All right, guys. Have a good week.